our meeting of December 9, 2020. I will need a motion 1.4 to adopt tonight's agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? I'll need a motion 1.5 to approve the board meeting minutes of November 24, 2020. Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Tonight we have Mr. Pledge. Oh, yes. <laughs> Let's, if we could all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. We're going to begin tonight with presentations, but before we do, I just wanted to take this moment uh, once again, every time that we have the public, uh, at least online, and we still are, when we do meet in public, we do have the ability for members of the public to be here, uh, but we just, I want to make sure that we um, let everyone know that all of our administrators and our staff are working if you could possibly work doubly hard of what we had been working as we uh, get through this time where uh, everyone's home, or a lot of people are home, I just wanted to make sure that uh, you know, Dennis, and that your staff, that uh, we're all very appreciative. We know all the hard work that's going into these times. And as a board, we get to see you know, the fruits of all your labor. And I think uh, this time around, uh, it's not like the spring where everything was thrown at us quickly that, you know, as a district, we are really making inroads. I've had on uh, Saturday, I went to the Presbyterian Church and I was approached by a couple of people who wanted to thank our teachers for the incredible work that's going on online. And they also made the point that it was much different than the spring, obviously. Great. Um, but they had great lessons, and they were attentive, and they kept making sure that the student was interacting. So, you know, that made me feel good because I hadn't seen some of these people uh, with my work schedule, and they wanted to say that my grand, uh, one was my granddaughter and one was my daughter. So um, really was a great feeling to know that that's happening out there, that people are seeing it, and it is impacting our students. So... Um, Maybe tonight Josh will have some feedback on that also. But um, with that, I think let's we'll start with. Miss O'Hara is not able to be here tonight, right. but she did send to me uh, some items to report on, if you'd like okay. me to start. Yep. I didn't know if you were going to do it or mm -hmm. she had John going to do it. Because, you know, um, he'd be I, good. I'd, no. <laughs> I'd be happy to do it. Uh, so, uh, Ms. O'Hara would like to report that uh, synchronous instruction at the elementary school is going extremely well. Uh, she reports that in an effort to provide additional support to all of our students and families. Uh, CES students have synchronous instruction, and that's happening from Mondays through Fridays using Google Meets. And students are uh, in their classrooms with their grade level teachers. They get three academic blocks each day. And then also they get uh, their various specials every day. So that would be art, music, and phys ed. Um, and then in addition, the elementary school students are also participating in other enrichment activities, including uh, STEM activities. So there are many opportunities for our young learners to get uh, opportunities for uh, live instruction and support from their teachers and their specialists. Uh, second item for Mrs. O'Hara, uh, the uh, elementary school book exchange. This week, uh, Ms. Hallman st and, uh, and the elementary school started to coordinate a book exchange. Uh, the first exchange happened yesterday, and that was for kindergarten and first grade students. And tomorrow, we'll be holding a book exchange for second and third grade students. And the book exchanges take place outside of the front entrance to the elementary school. So if anyone is interested, uh, that will be during school hours in the front of uh, Chester Elementary School. And we are following uh, all of our normal 
safety protocols during the book exchange. Uh, Ms. O'Hara reminds that the end of quarter two is upon us, so December 18th will be the end of the second quarter. And uh, Ms. O'Hara asks for parents to uh, please help us to make sure that your children are attending all of their uh, Google Meets and completing their assignments by their due dates. And if there are any uh, special circumstances that our teachers or our staff should be aware of, uh, Ms. O'Hara encourages parents or guardians to reach out to the teachers and administrators uh, to let them know what's happening at home so that uh, we can be understanding of that and provide support if necessary. Uh, Ms. O'Hara has been making uh, video announcements. If you haven't seen them, uh, please take a look. Ms. O'Hara is very talented with these video uh, presentations. Uh, she's got a great sense of humor that is appreciated by everyone from our kindergartners to our parents. So there's a lot of Easter eggs in there for parents uh, if you're looking for them. Uh, so these announcements are used to uh, show highlights uh, on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And they're posted on our website if you'd like to, uh, to see them. And uh, in closing, Ms. O'Hara would like to say that she's extremely proud of all of our students' efforts in the first week and a half of remote learning. She thanks the parents and families for their support at home. And always, uh, as always, if you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to reach out and call the main office or Ms. O'Hara directly. Uh, we are on site and we're here to help. Uh, so that's a report from Ms. O'Hara this week. You did a very good job. Thank as you. My voice is a little deeper. Than no, hers. But I didn't get all of her normal sense of humor that she uh, usually comes with, but you did a very, no, very standard good job. But we appreciate that, Mr. Petrolite. Thank you. And with that, since he doesn't have to follow her, Mr. John Flanagan. Good evening, sir. Good evening, everybody. How are you? We're doing well. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to be here tonight to present to the Board of Education. Thank you, Mr. Petrolak, Mr. Brennan as well. You don't want Mr. Petrolak to step in for you? You're good. Is he's very good. <laughs> <laughs> um, just a couple of updates from my board report that, that you've received in advance. Uh, remote learning is going extremely well here at the Academy as well. Uh, we have implemented, while this, during this period of remote, our traditional nine-period synchronous day. Uh, we made some adjustments to it. We understand how difficult it can be sometimes if we had a student that has, say, eight of the nine periods plus lunch to be consecutively on a computer, and we, we, we received a lot of that feedback prior to. So uh, what we've done is we have a 30-minute block of direct instructional time with the teacher, and then we have an independent work time, which, uh, which is approximately the next 15 minutes till the following class starts. It rests the eyes. It gives kids a chance to stretch, to to get a drink and to go re get ready for, for the next class. Um, so we've gotten great feedback on our, our synchronous instruction so far from students, from, from teachers, and from parents. Um, our teaching staff is working very hard. Um, some of them are, are working right here in the building. Some of them are, are working from home as we try and implement social distancing in the building. So we have a, a schedule that we're working with them on different days and you know who's here and, and who, who's working from home. And, we have the ability to pop into their classes. Sometimes they see you know, Mr. Flanagan's thumbnail pop up in the, in the corner and, and wave hello, which is always nice to see the kids interacting with the teachers. Um, our engagement's been very good so far with, with the remote, and actually we're seeing uh, you know, more students participating, it, it seems like, since we've gone to, to our remote uh, in synchronous model. Um, we've wanted to really pay attention to the social-emotional. I have to thank Mrs. Garcia. Um, she really had a great idea. She started what are called uh, middle school survival socials, and they were a forum that was put out there for our 6th, 7th, and 8th graders to come and to speak and to talk about remote learning, and they also just turned it into a great place for, for kids to have conversations, and especially our 6th our grade social, which uh, you know, had approximately half the class came to us, so half of our 6th graders were there, and some didn't want to leave, and so Mrs. Garcia you know, promised that we could keep talking, and you know, Mrs. Garcia likes to talk. And uh, uh, we, we, we were looking to do more of these uh, socials, not only at the middle school level, but at the high school level as well. And uh, our student council president, Caroline Farrell, is actually organizing them as we speak. She's been emailing, looking for teachers that want to participate and getting something together so we can offer the same type of, uh, of socials to our, to our high school as well. Um, 
A couple things that, that weren't on my board report I wanted to bring forward. Uh, I'm really proud of our teaching assistants who really have, uh, have pushed a level of, of comfort that they necessarily weren't used to based on the job that they were doing. As many of them, with the help of Mr. Spence, have really taken on a technology role to train themselves so they could be helpful in the virtual classroom. And we've been utilizing breakout rooms in the virtual classrooms so that teaching assistants and teacher's aides that are there to help students can have more of a forum to do so where within a classroom our teacher's aides can break out with students and work with them individually to give them the help that they need. And, and not only are our teacher's aides using those breakout rooms, but a lot of our teachers are now using them for collaborative learning. And I'm starting to see that as, I'm, as I continue to observe our staff. Um, I'd like to thank someone that not a lot of people know here at Chester Academy. His name's James Burke. And James uh, was with us for the, the first half of the year as a substitute teacher, helping out with, uh, with one of our teachers that wa was working from home uh, for the first half of the year. And James was kind of her, her eyes and ears in the classroom and did a tremendous job in one of our special education classrooms, really connecting with students and doing a great job. And James has, has moved to the, the state of Florida. He, he was one of our subs, and, and, and we'll miss him here. And, and hopefully, maybe we'll see him again one day. Um, some really good things happening. Um, I'd like to congratulate Sung Young Hung, who has received a full ride to Colby College in Maine. I thought we'd share some of that news as we're getting around the college times here. Um, so congratulations. Um, Vincent M is going to be receiving the, uh, the Hobie Award, the Hugh O'Brien uh, Leadership Seminar. So he'll be attending uh, that conference, uh, which is scheduled for June. And hopefully, hopefully it'll be in person. We'll, we'll, we'll keep our fingers crossed. That's the ways out. Uh, we have 17 new college uh, admitted students that went to instant decision days for SUNY Rockland and SUNY Orange and were instantly admitted. So congratulations to those students here at Chester. We're, we're excited for them. Um, if you haven't had a chance to listen to the Hambo Huddle, it goes on the social media. Mr. Aguilar has been putting it out doing there. doing a great job. Um, yeah, it's a, a little podcast that some of our students as an internship are doing. And, uh, you know, speaking of, of socials, the middle school student council in conjunction with the high school student council and, and Josh here as well are working for on a, a virtual uh, spirit week for right before the holidays, so a holiday-themed spirit week. So those are all exciting things to come. We'll be sending out parents and students information. Um, and just two other things, just a couple teacher names I want to mention that I'm really proud of. Um, you know, it's interesting when you see what people do in their virtual environments and how they make their environments learn, uh, look, and, and feel comfortable for students. And so you know how on the, on the back of a Google Meet you can change the background to look at you have some yes. fancy, some fancy, you know, luxury. yeah, luxury house behind you. So the other day I was having a pre-observation with Mr. Rodman, one of our tech teachers, and I was looking at his background and I was thinking, well, that's an interesting background. Is that one of the virtual ones? And I asked him, I said, are you at home? Is that a virtual background? And it turns out he actually built the background himself and was broadcasting from down the hall, which completely fooled me. <laughs> um, so the work he put in, and aesthetically, he did it for his students. He wanted them to, to nice. have a comfortable feeling there. And uh, a class I had an opportunity to observe, and, and just to share, uh, you know, a, couple, a, a little over a month ago, I observed Mr. Ellers, one of our health PE teachers. And in an observation, you can see a lot of different things. And in this observation, what I saw was a teacher with his cohort of students, and they had a conversation. And the conversation engaged the students for the entire period. And normally in an observation, teachers are doing maybe 10 different things. They've got a lot of different things lined up. This conversation was, you know, when we talk about social emotional, and especially early on in the year, our students had masks on. They weren't, they, it was hard getting them out of their comfort zone and, and out of their shell and, and talking in the classroom. And it was an adjustment. When I saw students, and as simple as it sounds, just sitting down and having a conversation, it made me feel good. It made me say, wow, you know what, we've connected. These, these students are happy to be here. They're comfortable. And I, and I was really proud that the teacher was able to just bring everybody to a level where I saw laughs and smiles like I hadn't seen in months. And so I was proud. And, and as we, we, we move on day after day, we're starting to see more and more of that. And so uh, I'm excited and optimistic as to what our, our school year will continue to bring us as we move on. And uh, on that note, does anyone have any questions? I don't have questions, but I just want to also comment on uh, Mr. Ellers and his wrestling guys. They uh, took a challenge, and I want to thank them uh, from the Kiwanis Club. They went out to the toy drive, and they delivered a bunch of toys 
which I like how he does that, and they do it as a team. And it really uh, showed some really stand-up guys out there getting together and uh, making an impact on the community. And uh, also Mr. Aguilar came out on uh, Saturday in the rain. He uh, made an appearance there and stayed with us for like an hour. So mm -hmm. it really was appreciative. Uh, but that goes without saying with how those guys inspire their students. And uh, we see it throughout the whole district with our staff and our teachers making you know making them all feel comfortable and all directing them in the right way that those kids went right out they did it on their own they delivered those toys and it was really it was great to see so i know i'd been uh, back and forth with mr ellers uh, you know when he was asking for all the details this year and then this being a no contact drop off that we had never done before it really it was really nice to see the kids uh, getting involved so please thank all of them i will for uh, you. doing that. Thank and my you. only question for you really was, um, as we're in this uh, current mode, <clears throat> you know, I ask this question at every meeting, and I say to the parents, please make sure you're calling the school. Is that working in this current situation we're in, where we're making sure that the parents, the ones who may be having issues, I haven't seen any. That's why I was really pleasantly surprised, and then hearing it on the weekend, all the positive comments. Are we getting no calls so we're making sure that people aren't falling through the cracks? And I know I ask you guys that every time, and I don't want to sound like a broken record, but... Yeah, we, we're always reviewing to see, you know, our, what, like I said, as our engagement levels have gone up, the job becomes a little bit easier to, to keep track of people. But we, we continue to, to look out for students that may be having a difficult time, um, whether it be something that they're having technically or with Google Meet, or whether they're just having a difficult time in general. Our counselors are doing an excellent job reaching out to kids. Um, you know, we're trying, and, and, and our, our greatest resource is really our students who sometimes get in touch with us to say, my friend's having a tough time, and then we know what we can do to, to, to get involved. So um, it's, it's, it's hard when you don't see them every day, um, but, you know, I think this is a great community where people communicate, and if someone is a shy to come forward, you know, we generally hear from somebody else that, that helps them out. So. Yeah. Well, thanks for your leadership, John. Your guys are really doing a great job. Thank you for your support. I'm glad you mentioned that because I saw in your report uh, Thank you. Sure. How is the attendance right now? Is everybody logging in? Are we losing kids? Um, we're finding that right now with the synchronous model, our attendance numbers have gone up. We were generally seeing in the hybrid model, which was an interesting model to figure out attendance because you figured it out for your students that were here and then your students that were remote. Uh, we were still receiving, and most of our students were at least logging in that we, we knew they were around. They might miss a meet, uh, but we, we were you know, approximately, we knew where 90, uh, over 95 percent of our kids were, which meant that were 5 percent that we were moving around. Now I would say the consistency on those attendance meets themselves are closer to that, what you would find on a daily day, where, okay, I have two students absent today, I'm going to mark them absent, then we can look for the trend of those two students absent again tomorrow, because then, you know, now we got to call, we got to make sure we know where they are. But students are, I think, and, and I'm sure Josh will speak to this a little bit later, uh, we're finding a little bit more routine in that nine period schedule, knowing exactly what time and so on, and seeing their teachers that they may not have gotten a chance to see as much during the hybrid schedules, so getting to foods, getting to tech, getting to art. So right. it adds a different element to the day. Anything else? Thank you, Mr. Flanagan. Thank you. Great job as always. Well, thank you. Uh, this would be our normal public comment time, but I think we can jump right to roundtable. Yeah. Mr. Petschlack, do you have something for roundtable? I do. I have uh, two items. Uh, the first one is to provide an update on some COVID-related information. So uh, as a reminder, schools are closed with remote learning only uh, through January 18th, and we are scheduled to resume in-person learning on January 19th. Uh, the district is uh, currently following 
uh, the trending of, of cases in the county and across our uh, state and, and country uh, with a lot of concern, like everyone else's. Uh, we're paying particular attention to the yellow, orange, and red zones that require testing, uh, COVID testing, in order to, uh, to, for schools to stay open. And we are anticipating that uh, Orange County will be entering into one of those color zones uh, some point in the near future. And uh, we are starting uh, our preparation for uh, getting a COVID testing program into place in our schools so that we will be able to open for in-person learning when we are permitted, permitted to do so. Uh, one of the important aspects, uh, an important fact about COVID testing is that parents are required to give consent for their children to participate in the COVID testing. So uh, that can sometimes be uh, a process that takes some time uh, to accomplish to get parents to complete the consent forms and get them back into school uh, so that we can account for them and then start to schedule students for testing. So we will begin that process within the next uh, couple of weeks, uh, both at the elementary school and at the academy. Uh, we are gathering the information that's required for the consent forms putting the forms together, and then we will be sending those out to parents over the next uh, few weeks. Uh, we do not have a lot of detail to share in terms of the testing itself uh, at this time because we're in the preliminary stages of contacting providers and uh, identifying all the specific needs. Um, but we do anticipate, uh, as has been the case in other districts around the state, who have done COVID testing, that there will be no cost uh, to families. Uh, generally, what happens is uh, if families have insurance coverage, health insurance will pick up the cost of the testing. Um, if families are uh, receiving Medicaid, Medicaid will pick up the cost. And then if families are not on uh, either Medicaid or health insurance, then uh, there's usually no cost to the families. Um, but again, we don't have the fine details on that at this time. Um, you know, but that will be finalized over the next few weeks. Uh, so on uh, another topic, a more positive topic, I'd like to recognize our Chester Academy teachers, Marie Kreiner and Andrew Latini, for bringing their art students downtown Chester uh, last week, uh, as they have for the past several years, to paint holiday scenes on the different businesses in town. Um, it's, uh, it really felt good to see our students out there and doing something which they've done in the past, and it felt like normal. Uh, yeah, it and I know great. our business owners appreciated it. And uh, once again, uh, Tony and his staff at the Rustic Wheelhouse took very good care of our, our students for lunch, and we always appreciate uh, Tony's hospitality. Uh, and also thank you to Mayor Bell for inviting us to participate again this year. Yeah, it looks great. It really does. They did a great job, as always. Mr. Pashnik. Mr. Petrock, I have just uh, one question about COVID testing. Mm -hmm. Would that be strictly for students or would staff and, and teachers, everyone else be included in that? So uh, under the governor's cluster zone plan, we will be required to test either 20% or 30% of our entire school population. So that would include students that are attending, uh, that are attending for in-person learning, plus all of our uh, employees. Uh, so we're not going to be testing everyone, but rather either 20% of them if we're in an orange zone, or 30% uh, in a month if we are in a red zone. You're welcome. Sure does. Uh, do you have anything for Oxma? Or not? Um, not. Okay. Josh. Good evening, sir. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Great. Um, I'd just like to say good evening. Good evening to everyone. Um, my report for this week is a combination of the information that I've been gathering over the past couple of weeks. So I'm going to start by saying that we have started 
uh, teacher collaborations in our student council meetings. So teachers have been able to ask us and to, if they could join our student council meetings to give their point of view um, on how everything's been going. This started a couple weeks ago, uh, but I'm just getting to report it now. So I'll be able to tell you guys everything that's been happening. Um, one thing that actually really surprised me was how much my point of view changed sure once the teacher started joining Remember because two of these? Yeah, um, it started off with me thinking all about the students and how the students are feeling, how we can make the students lives better, but I never really thought about the teachers and how the teachers were being affected about this whole thing. So the first thing is that everyone is affected um, with this, not just the students. And yes, the students are our main priority and that's uh, why I'm here to, to show the students, but the teachers are the main part of how we're going to get everything running for the students. So that was the first thing. Um, and I found that it's also like a domino effect. The teachers, uh, the students are struggling because there's a lot of work and it's hard to understand because of online learning. Uh, and the teachers have to give less work and try to make it more fun so that the students want to learn more. But we also have standardized tests that we have to worry about. So the teachers have to give a certain amount of work in order to make sure that the students are getting all the work that they need for these standardized tests that are not being taken away. We still have to take these standardized tests at the end of the year. So it's, it's a domino effect because the students are feeling stressed and the teachers need to give them that because if not then... So basically the solution for this is that the teachers need to give an extra layer of understanding for the students, but the students also need to put in that extra effort and go the extra mile just so that they can better understand the work. So it has to uh, balance out. The teachers and students both have to balance out. It is getting a lot better. Uh, like Mr. Flanagan said, it is getting a lot better because of the new schedule because uh, some of this stuff, a lot of the problems were happening because we didn't have a secured schedule. I know for me, I was all over the place at first, but now since there is uh, a secure schedule and it's just like school, it's easier for me to know when I have to do everything, get to my classes, and I have found that students are attending classes more. The students that I've uh, been talking to at first they weren't all getting to their classes and stuff, but now I see them attending and kind of getting a better understanding of everything. So that I thought that was really good. Um, next is Hamble Strong. We're working on a project to get the words Hamble Strong on our school somewhere, just to show our Hamble pride, because that is something that we need right now. Um, school is a lot harder than it used to be, and used to be a lot easier to show our pride for the school because we can come into school wearing school colors, all that, but now it's harder. So we still want to show our students and the community that we are still prideful of our school. So we're looking for a way to get Hamble Strong somewhere on the school. Uh, we're working more on that. Haven't figured it out yet, but we're almost there. Um, yeah, and then there's also fundraisers that we've been working on, the sophomores. They just finished a carousel cake fundraiser. The juniors are working on a t-shirt contest fundraiser. Uh, I'm not sure how far they've gone on that yet, but um, they are, have been working on it. And the varsity club is doing a cookie dough fundraiser to fund the senior trip, which we're still working out the kinks on. But um, that's what we have for fundraisers. And lastly, there's a Winter Spirit Week, as Mr. Flanagan mentioned, that we're trying to get for the students just so that we can make the online learning a little bit more fun and um, kind of get the students interacting with the teachers a little more. So that's my uh, Josh, your perspective on uh, the, the teachers and the students and then where that light bulb goes off, that everyone's in the same learning curve. Uh, but your perspective on it is you're kind of years ahead of your uh, age, you know, with uh, your intellect and your ability to communicate. And there's nothing better for us than, you know, to hear it from the students and how that's affecting you. But your insight on your teachers and what they're going through, that's important. And um, even at our jobs, uh, some of us are remote sometimes and then at work other times. and 
it affecting everybody. But the, the ability to see that and understand that and know that there's a give and take, that's really important as students to know that. The teachers, obviously, they know that. But it's good that you guys are communicating. And I like the idea that Mr. Flanagan said earlier about having the, you know, the rooms where everyone come in and, and everyone's talking, you know, just to be able to talk and work out the issues. Um, and I, you're a great spokesperson for them. You really are. I, I can't think of a year that we've had such input you know, from the student body at a level of understanding because with everything going on, you know, it's, it's more than you know, a lot of people can comprehend. So, yeah, we really appreciate it. Thank and uh, I would ask you that in that perspective that you have and in knowing that, that you all work on that together with the teachers because there's nothing better than that, that you're all still, you know, you're all talking the same language. Um, you know, the work, like you're talking about standardized testing, that stuff's always going to be there. Who knows what that looks like at the end of the year, you know, what, and what mode we're in. But um, they all have a job to do, and everyone understanding that, it's important. And it's great that you guys are getting that sense of what pressure that they're under also. So, you know, we, all, we always think about the pressure on the students trying to learn in that environment, and you're looking at it that, oh, that teacher, they're under that same pressure. Right? How are they getting all that information to us? How are we going to learn it? Um, it's really, it's eye-opening for me, and I really appreciate the time and effort that you're putting in to try to make it better. Thank you. And if you need anything, obviously, you know, turn to those uh, adults around you. And, <laughs> yeah, it, and everyone's going to do everything and move, you know, mountains to try to make sure that we are in the best position possible. And I think you guys are seeing that in the difference that we're having now with uh, synchronous learning. It's really, it's really night and day. So in the nine periods, I think, are really the key, like you said, that everyone has a structure. So thank you. Really thank great you. job. This kind of takes my breath away, actually. <clears throat> Anything else for roundtable? That would bring us to tonight's consent agenda. I was trying to make this the longest meeting in the history of the school, but we can't do that. Um, I'll need a motion for our consent agenda. Make a motion the board accepts consent agenda items 5.4. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The eyes have it, and uh, we will not be having a second public comment. So I will need a motion. Uh, again, I want to thank everyone for being here tonight. Thank you to Keith for being able to get on remotely. And I will need a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Any opposed? Everyone have a great night. Joshua, great job. Thank you, sir. Thank you.